Pull up jam track number one, which will be measures one through four of this progression. Two measures of F major seven, two measures of G seven. You'll be using diagrams one and two. Okay, it's a little muddy because we talked about in the end of the previous lesson how that bass note is clashing, especially with a jazz box and flat wound strings, big strings that can get thumpy down there. What are you going to do? You have to know these structures and then you have to delete the bass note, just omit it. Okay, so that will comp perfectly with this track or if you had a keyboard player and percussion and horns and a sax player that's overplaying, all that business, you're still going to be out of everybody's way. Notice the way I put that, so let's try that. Before you do that, you're gonna be amazed how it'll throw you for a loop because you're used to fingering it this way, perhaps, right? We decided on this being a default fingering. So if I say delete the bass note, you're kind of stuck. You think of it just this way. This is where you want to be flexible on your fingerings. So let's go through and see how you could finger this. You could finger it one and two, or you could cross them, right? Two and three, or you could cross them three and four, or you could cross them, right? You could use your index finger and do a double stop finger where you press down both strings, or you could do the same thing with your second finger, your third finger, or your fourth finger. Now, just clamping a big bar in there, that, that would also work, okay? But that's not really what we're after. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go with just the first and the second fingers, and you'll see why. Because if I play the seven and the three, of the F major seven. You see how I'm reaching over? I'm visualizing this as my root. I see it coming out of this big F major seven. So I've just got these two notes. When I go up to the G seven, I just move up one fret and then I slide my second finger up one more fret. This is gonna pay off when we have to finish section A. So play along with me on this. Now you might be wondering, what am I supposed to do rhythmically? Well, the groove here is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and you're in a sixteenth note grid. Bossa Nova and Latin things are in sixteenth note grids. So you got to make sure you play something that's appropriate. It's beyond the scope of this lesson for me to teach you that right now because I'm just addressing note selection. But what you want to do is listen to the percussion and listen to how keyboard players comp and guitarists in this style because that's something that's just a vocabulary. And you got to listen to what's going on around you. So if you play like this, it's probably not going to work. That ain't happening, is it? Or if you do this. It's too much. So this is truly where less is more. Just practice being able to play on the beat for example, one, two, three, that's on beat one. Or practice on beat two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Or on beat three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Or on beat four. One, two, three, four. One. But even those sound kind of square. So let's work on the ands. Your eighth note grid be one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. That's sounding stilted also. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. So the ands aren't even sounding hip on this, are they? That is because in Latin, 16th note groove, the e's and the uhs are where you want to put those little punctuations in. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Now this is pretty quick if you're not accustomed to 16ths. Two, three, four, one e and a two. One E and a two E and a two E and a four E and a And again, these sound very stilted with just one little figure like that. Or let's put on the uh, which is the third sixteenth. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a four. Now we mix it up. 
that's a good figure because you're in on the downbeat. So that figure would be a dotted eighth and a sixteenth. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. You hear I'm singing the groove. Also staccato. You have to have your staccato together. If it's just ringing out, it isn't happening, is it? So make sure that you can play cleanly, that you can dampen, play these notes staccato. That's why hybrid picking or playing with your fingers is probably a little better than strumming it. Okay? So work on that. If you're not comfortable with hybrid picking, um, Work on it. You know, you just got to work on using the pick on the lower voice and your middle finger on the higher voice. So I'm not going to address the rhythmic aspect anymore. You need to just work on that, get the vocabulary, and it really comes from listening so you can sing these figures. Uh, you probably won't be inclined to count them out and all that business. So just practice singing like a percussion part. If I was playing percussion against this... <laughs> You hear, I'm thinking like a timbali player, a percussion player. So if you can sing these figures, then it's just so easy to play and to sit well in the pocket. That was playing the guide tones for these two chords. Right? That's the end of this lesson. Make sure that you're rock solid on these two chords because it'll make it very easy to finish the piece off.